unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Every day. What was that for? For the media team. <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? Tell your neighbor this August. The 12th and 13th. Just up there. That field just opposite us. Praise the Lord. We're going to be there. Fanero members, if you know a Fanero member, we ask for only five people. Only five. Unless you don't have faith. So, how many of you are going to bring five and above? Put up. We want to see your face. You're serious about that? So you multiply that by five. Can you imagine how many people are going to be having that? That's why we need many volunteers. Uh, we need many people who are available uh, to help because there's going to be a lot of work. I expect every Fanero member to be doing something. Do something. Tell your neighbor, do something. Hallelujah. Some of you have given in. May the Lord richly bless you. Hallelujah. Some of you have given in. Tell that guy to give me more volume. We have enough power. Uh, uh, some of you have what? Given. God bless you. Some of you are already registering. I've seen. How many of you are doing yes to your sasula? By show of hands. Let me see your hands. Those of you who are not yet up, I pray may the Lord Jesus Christ convict you. I mean, and, and that's why I beseech you, majorly for people who have cars. Everybody who drives the car to Fanero, that they give God an hour and sit in a taxi. Just give it to Him. It's the only way you can thank Him for driving a car. I know some of you sit in very high cars. Even to climb, you need to. As if you're going to heaven. But that day, we leave our cars and give God a gift. We move to two. Praise the Lord Jesus. You pay for a taxi, you open a mystery. As in, don't even mind them. You don't need to speak directly to them. You speak to each other. <laughs> if somebody doesn't want, they go out. Because we pay. Hallelujah. We want to reach at least 50,000 people in those two days. Is it possible? Muzire, mu. Hallelujah. We are going to have street preaching. It is back. Tell your neighbor, street preaching is back. How many of you did street preaching last year? Put up your hands. Wow. How many of you doing this year? Are you saying, God, this time I have to be on the streets? Ah. I remember police almost rounded up some people. What are you doing here? I said, Makaya <laughs> Rabakasa. You understand? And that day, we, we dress the smartest. You put on a suit. You park on in Tinder stage. You open the Bible. Hallelujah. If he was proposing that day, he will leave you. Because he, he will realize how crazy you are. Praise the Lord. But it can only die so it can live. That's the day you'll find the right one. Tell your neighbor, that's the day. You'll find the right one. At least give God some craziness for two days. Then after that, you can become no more. Praise the Lord. But we must write history. Tell your neighbor we're writing history. Praise the Lord. There are people last year I saw on the road. I could not believe they were on the road. I was shocked. I was like, even you are on the road. And say, I'm Muslim, I'm on the road. I'm like, what? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, we went on the streets for 
vaccination. You remember those days? You know those bands, eh? Who are cancer walking? You cancer walked and TB walked and malaria walked. And then you walked for your bank and your NGO and you cannot do it for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor we must make it happen. Trust me, the theme itself explains experience upon experience. We're going to have a service that day. Wonderful service that day. The first day will be for drinking only in the Holy Ghost. That day. That day if you feel you want to drink a lot, walk with somebody who will carry you back home. I mean, we're going to, I mean, we're going to see God. We're going to see God. Hallelujah. I feel that day, I have seen it. We are going to have a mighty visitation. Mighty. Mighty. Some of you are going to see power like you've never seen before. And I promise you. I mean, you've seen power. But that day you're going to see power like you've never seen before. If you're sure you're going to roll, put on pants, that's okay. But come ready. Praise the Lord. Of course, healing will take place that day, but the second day we're going to dedicate it more to worship and healing. We want to see all manner of disease leave. Bring, bring, bring sick people. Just, just dare God. Tell him, God, we are ready to dare you. We are going to see God that day. Hallelujah. Those two days are going to go down in the history of our nation. I believe something is going to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. That's why I ask you to pray. Pray for us. Pray for the leadership. Pray for everybody who is involved in this. If you feel you want to do something, just register and say, me, I can shout. We shall put you somewhere. Hallelujah. The last week, we are going to have drives through in the night, interceding all through Kampala. You understand? Just speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. And we want you to be a part of this. That day, that week, eh? Kampala will know there is Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, some people think that we are just there to promote Fanero. Fanero is a vision. It's a vision. We want simply to show Christ in another dimension. Praise the Lord. That is why I will also take some time in the last week to teach those of you who are going to heal the sick. You know, we want to raise about three or four hundred divine technicians. We just teach you how to heal. Just teach you how to heal. We create type. We, we whatever. And I believe, I think before then, I think we shall have a separate time of, I don't know whether we'll meet here or somewhere else, but I wanted us to get an evening of simply prayer. I mean, we just come and pray. We just come and pray. That day, just come to pray. We speak in tongues and, and, and be in the presence of God for at least four hours non-stop. No interrupting us with programs. No announcing anything. We just be in His presence. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be a part of that? I too. Praise the Lord Jesus. I too. We're excited. And then I'm also going to ask for a favor. We have had very, very painful experiences when people who come, majorly for the first time, come and fail to find seats. Many of you have noticed that every time we put chairs in the overflow, they are filled. You understand? So sometimes we extend here and then extend here. So we're working with a team to see how we can fix the overflow and pack it as much as we can. You understand? But that's going to come with a price too. If we have, say, seven or eight hundred or nine hundred or one thousand chairs outside, for those of you who, who are old members, for Nero, your old members, give space to the new. Just do. Praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Majorly, for those of you who are submitted to the ministry, submitted to me, many of you have access to me. You just call me and you see me. You understand? So I don't expect that you see me every day and and then you sit inside. You understand? You understand? Some of you have access to us on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. There are people who take six months to see Apostle Grace. Do you know that? There are people who have had appointments for like 20 years and they fail to see us. 
those people, okay, figure of speech, those people, we need to give the people, the, the visitors, more time than us. For us who are old, we know the spirit and the way of things. Even if you stood outside and stood on, on, a, on, a, on a screen, you'd be kawa, you'd still come back. When I all come and then they say, I looked for a seat, I fell the second time. And they always tell me, Apostle, me, I came there, I came at 6 30, I failed to get a seat, I tried that second time, third time. And, 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 and I'm a diabetic woman, I have arthritis, I cannot stand the whole day. And it's painful that that woman has to walk back because she lacks a seat when somebody with healthy bones is sitting inside. It's not fair. Praise the Lord. So, way forward, many of you were submitted. I don't want the ushers to be pushing you out. We just want you to do it. Do it also as part of your ministry. The Lord will reward you abundantly. Hallelujah. Do it. I see faces. There are faces I know. You've been here. You know stars. Eh? I see the same faces I know. You're so familiar. Finance department stays inside. <laughs> we have reasons why. Christians these days need to give quickly. So, But some faces I see the, the William Cares. You guys, you go back. You go in the back. You offer, you offer seats to those who are coming in. How many of you support that? Yes. The moment you hear that this is a visitor, push them in front. You go back. In fact, that's why in the future we want the outside chairs to be filled first. You understand? By the old members. It says that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of you know we've been looking for space like forever. You know that? And we're still working on that. And within a few weeks, I believe we're going to be having bigger space. But before those few weeks, I mean, we filled last year, if you remember. Last year, June. So we've been rebellious all that time. I'm joking. So, but we need to work on that. And many of you, I, I told our leaders that we needed to move after the anniversary because there was a lot of work involved in movement. But while we're doing that, I beseech you again by the masses of God that you start giving space for the new uh, the, 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 the new faces. Majorly if you're directly submitted to me. Some of you are visitors. Sit. But there are those of you who are directly submitted to me and you've been in this mission for a year and a half or so. Or a year. I mean, come on. Give space for other people. Fill the outer seats. We can put a thousand for you and then you sit up there. While these other new people come and what? And, and enjoy uh, those seats. Because you have sat in them for one year. It's going to be only for a few. Just a couple of weeks and we'll be good. Is that okay? Mogamba Amina. Amina. I want to honor the presence of the men and women of God. Pastor Stephen Mwida, the Apostle Solomon. I'm told you came with a few visitors from Congo. Mama Lois, the Mukenyas. He says, like you, the man of God next to Milton. It's an honor to have you, sir. Mr. Ram, also Maweji, Emma, <laughs> Pastor Zach, Mutiaba, Pastor Shama, the new life, uh, the man of God, Pastor Sam Muinda, Mama Modesta, the programmer. That's a nice place. Keep it up. HR, keep it up. The Koyanganas are there. My mom is there. This is Benita Maweja and Mr. John Maweja in the house. Apostle Emma's parents. Those people, those, you remember when I saw Jesus at the age of eight, as at their crusade ground. And I went to their church when I was little. I grew up under that man. I honor the anointing of God upon his life. He's one of the greatest teachers I have had. He's wonderful. His wife, she's prayer. Praise the Lord. And, and, and if, if you understand what it means to have a praying mother. You, you, if you're a woman, your marriage can't fail. As in, that's it. You have, if you're a man, you live long. You understand? It's just... <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And many other men and women of God who are here, so whom are some of whom are unworthy to introduce because of what is upon their lives. Hallelujah. You, th those of you who are unworthy, just wave. 
because we we honor the anointing of God <laughs> upon your life. But I love your faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let's pray for the giving. Tell your neighbor we give big here. We're rich. We give big. Tell your neighbor God is not a dustbin. <laughs> Don't dump loose change. <laughs> Father, we thank you for the giving of your people. Multiply them, increase them, work in their lives like never before. We believe miracles are happening financially in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. I also want to thank God for the team from Houston, Texas. Is that it? Humble. What's the name of the church? Humble. Ariel. Yeah, they call it Ariel First Baptist. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be like you. Area First Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Praise the Lord. We've been with them for the, literally the whole week. Our team has been with them. They've been doing some ministry in Kawempe, Kanyanya. You guys went so far. I'm told some of you are not feeling well. Welcome to Africa. <laughs> the next time you come back, you'll be better. Besides, we have good sun, so I think that the, the, the weather is good, is it? Yeah. You, you tested the pineapples? Yeah. That's all I wanted. All other ground is sinking sand. So, when are you supposed to be going back? Sunday, this Sunday. We love you. We love you. We will miss you. Come back again. And again. We have enough food. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody raise your hands and let's worship God. Brian Rebecca, I love you. Congratulations on your son. He, he gave birth to a little boy. Boy is so beautiful. I could eat him. Let's worship God. There is an Irene with a throat problem. Eh? If you're near, come. I want to lay hands on you. Your throat has been having an issue. There's a lady. She's, I hear an Irene name. You have an issue with your throat. Come. I need to lay hands on you now with a throat problem. Hurry. I feel there's somebody with a throat problem. Hurry. Somebody, let's worship God. Just raise your hands and worship God. Worship God. Tell Him, Lord, we worship you. We worship you. You're the Irene? What's wrong with your throat? It hurts, eh? Okay, raise your hands. You're also Irene? Eh, you're in things. You also have a throat problem? What's wrong with yours? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Raise your hand. Somebody just worship God. Go! In the name of Jesus. Go. 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 Go! In the name of Jesus. There's also a robot. You have a, a chest issue. Harry, I need to pray for you. There's a robot. You have a chest issue. Come. Oh, shalala. Somebody speak in tongues. There's a robot. I hear a name like Robert. Your lungs are not well. Where are you? Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. I want you to check them. Somebody just worship God. There's a gentleman, I hear Robert. You have a breathing issue. God wants to heal you. If you're near, come. I need you. Somebody just worship God. Somebody speak another time. Speak in other tongues. The Prince of God is here. The Prince of God is here. The Prince of God is here. Give me that lady with glasses. There's a lady with glasses and a cream sweater. Glasses, cream, sweater. Get up for me. Come on, somebody. Speak in other tongues. 
She has a cream sweater. I saw it's a cream, eh? Kora ba 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 ba. Zore ba 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 ba. Come on, speak in other tongues. Go shit me ba ba. Ra ba 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 ba. Sakara ba ba ba. Oh, re re ba 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 ba. Raise your hand. I want you to put your hand on her stomach. Father, we thank you. Be delivered. Be delivered now. Now. Go! In the name of Jesus. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Ho sa la 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 ba 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 ba. Zere re ba sa ta la ba ba. No barrenness. No fibroids. No attack. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Somebody just worship God. Ho ra ba ba ba. Ho sa ta la ba ba ba. Robo sa la la ba ba ba. Ho sa la la. The prince of God is here. The prince of God is here. Masala ba 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 ba. Zore re ba 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 ba. Zota la ba 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 ba. Robo sa la la ba. Ho re ba ba ba. Ho sa la. Listen. For the last time, whether you're in the overflow or you're near. There's a robe that you've been in the past you've been having a breathing issue. Don't be afraid. Come and I pray for you. I had God. Whether in the overflow or you're here, there's a robe that you've been having in the past you've been having a breathing issue with your lungs. Where are you? Either he's out or he's in. Come. Is he there? Huh? Come. I need to pray for you. Is it the one? You're Robert. You're called Robert. You're called Robert. Okay, don't worry. Okay. Is it Robert? Thank you, Lord. Be healed. Be healed now. You're Robert. There's a Robert I'm looking for. Be healed. The command sign is to lose you now. Now, now, now! In the name of Jesus, come. What's wrong with you? Your lungs. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I command that pain to lose you. Go, 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 go! In the name of Jesus, let's worship God. Posa la 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 la. Zire bro posa la 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 la. Speak in other tongues. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Kora ba 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 ba. Kora la la ba ba ba. I don't hear you. Come on. Mashallah. Someone with a pain in your right wrist, the right hand, God is healing you now. Zore ba 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 ba
come on, speak in tongues. Somebody have been having a problem with your right arm, eh? The wrist. God is healing you right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you left a child at home who is sick, send healing now. If you have a sick child at home, send healing now. 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 I feel God is healing the sick. Come on. Send healing now. Now. There's another person, your 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 Arita, you have a stomach issue. Bad, bad stomach. Come. The name of her is Rita. Come. You have a stomach issue. It has been there for a few months. Come. The Rita, you have a not good stomach at all. Come. Your Rita? Your Rita? Put up your hands. No, no, no. I'm looking for a Rita. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. There's a Rita. You have a stomach issue. Whether you're in the overflow or you're here, come. I need your Rita. Okay. I see. God is going to heal you today. That was demonic. Put up your hand. Right now in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on her stomach. Put your hand on her stomach. I command that spirit. Loose her now. Go! In the name of Jesus. Lose her. Lose her. As a spirit of death. Lose her. She was gonna die. She was gonna die. She was gonna die. Come on. Come, come, come. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Oh, I worship you. Come on, worship God. Be healed. I worship you. There's a guy in a suit. Come, come. Come, don't worry. I'll pray for you. Come. There's a guy in a suit. Jacket, eh? White. You. Brown. Come. Heal. 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 In Jesus' mighty name.
I have seen eh? that in your family uh, I've seen something like a spirit that intends to take people early they don't live long eh? they don't live long and some just die without explanation am I making sense eh? how long have you noticed it five years back since then people have been dying just like that eh? 2011 2011 people have been dying just like that it's going it's ending today somebody stretch your hands towards this guy it's ending today the bible says with long life i will satisfy you and i shall show you my salvation that's what the bible says it's what the bible says and by reason of the anointing upon your life untimely deaths early deaths end in your family from today in the name of jesus christ they will live long in the name of jesus god minister to you to minister to them to be a source of provision to be a source of healing and deliverance in jesus mighty name it ends today somebody say amen the reason I live Somebody watch the film Is to worship you oh, I worship you Watch the film any disease, just receive your healing. Just receive. I feel there's a grace to heal today. I feel there's a grace to heal today. Receive your healing. Diabetes. Hypertension. There's someone on my right you have allergies. God is healing you now. Go back and eat meat. I Tell God today I need I need to see you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Robo sere ba 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 la 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 la. Zure re bo sa ta la la ba 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 ba. Hey.
saints. I feel there is a very heavy spirit of death eh? in this season. I don't know why. Come, stay there, stay there. I don't know why, but we need. I think we need to make a serious prayer against the spirit of death, like a serious instruction to hell. Eh? Because I just saw this young lady. I, I, I just felt like there was a spirit of death, and I said to hear that people are many people are exposed. Eh? And I saw her get accidents. And she has told me that she has been narrowly surviving. How long has that been? One month. Like every time you're surviving narrowly. On borders and what? Yeah, but I don't feel it somehow alone. Eh? I feel like there's many people have been tempted to. As in the devil has been tempting them with death. How many of you have been experiencing that? We need to break it to death. Now. You're not supposed to die now. Amazingly. When I was there, I saw her like in an accident and dead. And I, it's, it's. But I started to feel that it's not on one individual. I don't know why the devil is choosing to kill people now. But we are going to reverse it. We are going to reverse it. Imagine somebody for a whole month they are surviving accidents. You narrowly knocked. Were you on borders? Yeah, taxis, borders. Yeah. Like, yeah, even yeah. walking on the road. Yeah. yeah. She needs help. Also, Emma, help her. Help her. <laughs> Come on, let's refuse it. Not only her life, just say, speak to your family and say, I'm not losing anyone. I'm not buried. Say. Say it. Say I'm not losing anyone. I'm not burying my own. Say it. I'm not burying my children. I'm not burying my husband. I'm not burying my son. I'm not burying my mother. I'm not burying my father. We refuse the spirit of death. I command that spirit to lose you. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Come on. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, there's a time people just die. <laughs> it's like last year, I remember people were just dying. You remember that time, eh? And people were burying, burying and burying and burying. I knew there was a problem. But that is far from us. Tell your neighbor, that is far from me. And my own. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Lord. You live long. I decree it, you live long. I decree it, you will live long. In the name of Jesus. You're not going to die now. I'm trying to establish you here. You're going to live long. You're going to live long. Tell your neighbor, those who die don't look like me. In the name of Jesus. God is wonderful. Eh? I remember one time um, I was in a certain church and like the same video I saw, I saw a girl, a car was running over her head. I called it. Hey, I've seen you going. We prayed against it. In just about two hours, a car literally stopped on her neck like this. At Wise. She was on a board and then it tripped. And there was a speeding car. It literally stopped on her head. Man, God, God loves us. Tell your neighbor, God loves us. God loves us. Make it personal. Say, God loves me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will not die. Tell your neighbor, we will not die. You will not die. You will not bury your own. Tell your neighbor, you will not bury your own. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. Matthew 6, 22. Matthew 6. 22. We're going to read from the 22nd verse 
to the 23rd verse. If you're there, you say, Amen. Amuruganda. Praise the Lord. Are we there? One, two, three, let's read. The light is the body. The light of the body is the eye. One, two, let's go. Uh-huh. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Read it again. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Read it again. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Read the next verse. Come on. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness? It's not a question. It's not a question. There's a mark there. What's that mark called? Exclamation. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to the verse before. Now, the Bible says that the light of the body is the eye. That means your eye enlightens your body. You understand? Your body is enlightened because of your eye. You understand? Are we together? Are we together? The light of your body is your eye. Not only physically, but spiritually too. The more you are with your eye, the more um, clearer your vision is spiritually of your life, of everything around you, the more the body is safe spiritually. You have spiritual bodies too. Do you believe it? But when you go physical, physically, the more the light of the eye, the more the body brings light, the more the body is illuminated from the eye, right? So the light of the body is the eye. There is nothing that illuminates the body except the man's eye. But now here is the issue. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Hallelujah. But if your eye be evil, that's, that's the, the pendulum by which it swings. It's either a single eye or a, an evil eye. There is no middle ground. The eye is either single or evil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the word therefore, if your eye be seen, the, word, the Greek word there is hapelose, right? Hapelose. But it's written as A-H-P-L-O-U-S, right? Hapelose. Now, it means an experience where your eye carries the full maturity. It's complete. It's, it's, it's full. It's clear. Um... If we have people here who work on eyes, I, don't, I forget their names sometimes because I don't visit hospitals quite often. Yeah, forgive me. Opticians. I'm joking. Now, opticians, some of you, how many of you have ever had eye tests to see how good you see? Mm-hmm. Do we have an optician here? Huh? Opticians. We don't have opticians. Oh my goodness. Huh? Huh? Ophthalmologists, is that a claim? Ophthalmologists. Do we have ophthalmologists here? Huh? Now, when they check your eye and it's a hundred percent healthy, what do they call that? Twenty. Twenty twenty, is it? Do human beings have more than that? We could learn more from ophthalmologists. That word, my tongue slips a bit. Ophthalmologists. Okay. I think they call that the 2020 side vision, right? It means that your left eye is seeing like it ought to. Your right eye is seeing like it ought to. That's what they call your eye being single. You understand? He says, if your eye is 2020, thy whole body shall be full of light. And how true? How true? How true? Because if it's the source by which light comes into the body, if you have a blood lens... It means that you'll not have a clarity of light entering. You understand? You understand? Single whole. Thank you. Hapelose. Hapelose. It's whole. It's fulfilling its office. Thank you, Lord. 
You understand? It fulfills its office. It gives a hundred percent of what is expected of. That's a single eye. And he says that if your eye be single, then you're what? What happens? Your body is full of light. But if your eye is evil, that means it's blood. He says, then your body shall be full of darkness. But here is the ultimate question. The next line, he says, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness? You understand? That, is, that opens and changes everything. Everything. That changes everything. That changes everything. Think about it. When he says, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness. Meaning there is an experience where a man can see with his eyes and bring light to the body. But that light is darkness. The experiences where light is darkness. Or the light in a man is darkness. Because his eye is evil. In other words, when that man beholds, he doesn't behold darkness. He beholds light. But in its own, it's evil. Am I making sense? If the darkness, if the light that is in thee be darkness, if the light that is in thee be darkness, if the light that is in thee be darkness, now it's to you it is light. But if it be darkness, it's possible for you to say, my eye is clear, I see clearly. But it's evil. And because it is evil, inside you is darkness. But when you receive that darkness, it feels like you're dealing with light. I don't know whether I'm making sense. It feels like you're dealing with light. That means that there are people who call darkness light. The people who see what's wrong as right. The people who see what's right as wrong. And they regard that to us light. They regard that to us light. They regard that to us light. Revelation chapter 3. I want to show you something about a particular church. Let's begin with the verse 14. I want to show you something. Let's read. It says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. And it says, I know thy works. He's talking to the church at Laodicea. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would wet cold I wish thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, he says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Read the next line. Because, listen, listen to what makes them lukewarm. He says, thou sayest, I am rich and increased with good and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. There is a man in there who feels he's rich. He feels he's increasing with good. Why does he know? The Bible doesn't say he, he imagines. No. He, he knows not. Are we together? He drives a nice car, and he says, wow, I'm rich. He gets a nice house, and he says, wow, I'm rich. His goods increase, and he says, I bless the Lord, my business is a success. He says, ah, everything is working. I have need of nothing. And it's true that man can look around himself and find need of nothing. But the Bible says, and he knoweth not that he's what? Wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Do you see that he's blind? He sees he's rich, but he's blind. You understand? He feels he's strong, but he's weak. He imagines he's better than people, yet he is not. He thinks he's wise, yet he's not. She thinks she's anointed, yet she's not. He thinks he had God, yet he didn't. He imagines everything is going as a success, yet it's not. And God called that lukewarm. Some people think lukewarm is... <laughs> Look at that. Look at his definition of lukewarm. Look at God's definition of ritual. 
He says, so then thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Why? Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Saints, people don't know exactly who they are. And many things of this physical eye are very deceptive. Very deceptive. Very deceptive. In a certain portion of scripture, if you go back again, you see, when Jesus is telling the seven churches, you realize he says, let him who has an ear hear. What the Spirit says to the seven churches. Like there's a church, I don't know if it's the Atira. He says that they have a reputation of being what? Spiritual and deep, he says. But yet they are what? Let's read it. Huh? And to the angel of the church, it's Sardis, sorry. He says, unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write thee these things, said the, he that has seven spirits of the Lord, and says the seven, and the seven stars. He says, I know thy, what? He's going to a church. And that thou has a name, that thou livest. Like people say, wow, they are alive. <laughs> you understand? And the Bible says, and thou art you can imagine they have a name that they are alive everyone says wow those guys are alive and yet they are what they are dead then you find churches in the game in seven churches where it says that they think they are poor yet they are rich there is another church there I forget what that is you understand there is another one they, they used to feel that they are poor they used to think that they were poor yet to God they were rich. And you ask yourself the ultimate question. How come a man who is poor can think he's rich? And how come a man who is rich thinks he's poor? How come a man who is sick can think he's healthy? And a man who is healthy can think he's sick? A man who is deep can think he's shallow? And a man who is shallow can think he's deep? A man, you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we see with different kinds of eyes. Hallelujah. And when you go in the next verse, the next verse says, I counsel thee. Who is that talking? God. He says, I counsel thee. Buy of me gold. You think you're rich in your own way. Buy the real thing. Buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. That means according to the mind of the spirit. Wealth is gold tried with the fire. God has a different definition about wealth. You understand? That is why when Paul is addressing the rich, he says, you which are rich in this world. He's very clear. He says, you which are rich in this world. Meaning that your definition of wealth on earth is not necessarily God's definition of wealth. There are many men which are poor earthly, but very rich heavenly. And there are many men which appear to be rich earthly, but are very poor heavenly. Thank you. He says, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. He's saying there is no problem with being rich. There is no problem. And if I, give it to me in the uh, Amplified. Read in the Amplified. I love it. He says, as for the rich in this world, charge them not to be proud and arrogant and contemptuous of others, nor set their hopes on uncertain riches, but on God. Who? I love that. Richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, you have to invest. One day you might wake up and you don't have money. Somebody was advising me. I said, in my heart, because they were too old, I couldn't say it openly. In my heart, I said, that's not Apostle Grace Lueda. <laughs> I refused it. Listen, God is not making you rich to become broke. Come on. God is not making you rich to become broke. He says, he richly and ceaselessly provides. He's not going to hold his hand back. He's not going to hold his hand back. Oh, but one day you might wake up. That's your story. I refuse to believe that. I refuse to think. Me, it's not mine. You have yours, okay? Mine is in First Timothy 6, 6, 17, and that's where I'm at. Tell you anybody that's where I'm at. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, but he says there are people which are rich in this world. They are rich in this world. But they're not rich in another world. They're not rich in another world. 
Hallelujah. But because you're dealing with an eye issue, you cannot understand how serious that is. We're talking about money, but there are other aspects, spiritual. You know, and I'm going to go deep in that, okay? Let's go back to where we were at. He says that I counsel thee, he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed Clothes, sorry, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, uh huh, and anoint thine eyes with eye self that thou may see. He says, I, I want to help you to see. To see. Say so that you see. You really see. You see, let me explain this. The kingdom of heaven. All the dimensions of the kingdom of heaven, you realize, are glass. Okay? You realize when you read the book of Revelations, there's a glassy sea. There's a throne which is surrounded by glass. There are saints standing on a certain place which is full of glass. Literally, the Bible is a mirror. You see? It says, some versions, the old cake language says, and as we behold like in a glass. Okay, like in a mirror. Some versions use a glass. You know, it's every yeah, thank you. He says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. That means that everything that you're supposed to be seeing in the, the kingdom of heaven carries a certain they are seen through a mirror. You understand? You see. <laughs> I want to say something, but I don't know whether this congregation will understand. You see, God, not everyone, of course, some of you understand me. God, do you remember when a man of God in the scripture speaks of a place where he might be known as the Lord knoweth him? Huh? That experience where a man might be known, he says, for the, 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 the place where we, a man might be, might, you see? Yes, thank you. For now we see through a glass. Thank you. Darkly. But then, face to face. Now I know, he says, in part. Eh? He has gone off. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even also as I'm known. <sighs> Let me say it. He says, for we see through a glass. Okay? And he says, darkly. But then, face to face. Now, l- Think, think, the gospel, the Bible, the word is Jesus. That's the person of Jesus Christ. So when you read the Bible, you're literally looking at Christ. You understand? Now, when the Bible uses the word mirror, some versions use the word mirror, it means when you look at yourself in the mirror, when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see in the mirror? Yourself. And Paul, he says, now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. Shall I know even also as I am known. That means God wants to know you the way you know him. That's the relationship he keeps with you. He knows you as you may know him. He knows you as you may know him. Think about it. Jesus knows you as you may know him. He knows you as you may know him. How do you know him? Come on. How do you know him? Do you know him for being a healer? How does he know you? Come on. You know him to be rich. How does he know you? You know him to be anointed. How does he know you? You know him to be above everything. How does he know you? Above everything. He says, and this is love made perfect. That we might have confidence on that day. For as he is, as he is, so are we in this world. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom of God. There's a glass through which we see. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. If you know Jesus to be a healer, 
you will be known as a healer. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you know Jesus to be wisdom, you will be known as wisdom. If you know Jesus to be power, you will be known as power. Listen, Simon the sorcerer, the Bible says he bewitched people with much sorceries until they called him the great power of God. Capital. A sorcerer did things eh, until he became the great power of God. That was a sorcerer. The great power of God. That was a sorcerer. He was not beholding Christ. He beheld another thing, but he became the great power of God. I mean, that was their definition. That was the people's definition of Simon the Sister. It wasn't true that he was the great power of God, but that's what men called him to be. And then he meets other men. <laughs> I mean, go, go back to the great power. I need to show you something. I need to show you something. Begin from, I think, the, let's go, uh, begin from, uh, yes, yes. Give me the message, the message. I want, to, I want to give you a picture. Previous to, put your name. <laughs> Apostle Grace's arrival. He said that certain Simon had practiced magic in the city. And the Bible says he was posing as a famous man and dazzling <laughs> all Samaritans with wizardry. I mean, he would dazzle you. He could dazzle a man. He could do something and dazzle you. I don't know that he was walking in air. I don't know that he, whether he was eating metal. I, well, I don't know what. And the next verse says, he had them all. Listen to how the message says. He had them all. From little children to all region. Eating what? Out of his hands. They all thought he had supernatural powers and called him the great wizard. As if everyone knew. Now, when a man has all and they were eating from his hand, do you know what? Do you know that kind of position? That means to eat. They needed Simon. To eat. He had them all. That means he had put a spell on everyone. Everyone. He had a spell on everyone. The great wizard. And the next verse says, He had been around a long time and everyone was more or less in awe of him. Everyone. Everyone. And the next verse says, But when Philip came to town, <laughs> Put your name! When Philip came to town, Announcing the good news of God's kingdom and proclaiming the name of Jesus. They forgot Simon. <laughs> Philip was not just talking about Jesus. He must have done something. And they said no. This is different. That is why I tell the people of our land. You know, I find it a problem when a man says, Ah, that person is cult, ah. Listen, you preach the good news. People will forget any cult. <laughs> preach the good news. He announced the news. Philip was a demonstrator of the spirit. I mean, this guy would appear and disappear and speak to a eunuch and go. You don't, you don't joke with that kind of man. He, he wasn't just there to waste time. There was something on him. Something on him. That was different. It belonged to another world. Now, they, they forgot Simon and were baptized, becoming believers right and left. Do you know like having people for a long time and then one day a certain woman of God comes and then everything changes. One day like this. And everything changes. One day. One day like this. Left, right and center. Salvation said to come. And the next verse says, even Simon himself <laughs> believed. 
and was baptized. And what happened? And from that moment, he was like Philip Shadow. So fascinated with all God's signs and miracles. He wouldn't leave Philip's side. Everything was new. Everything was new. Somebody say, it's happening to me. Say it. Say it again. Say, it's happening to me. So he, he's at a place where another guy comes and he can see things and he's like, wow. He became the man's shadow. Everywhere the man was going, he said to follow. Where is Philip? You understand? Why? Because he saw something different. That's how salvation is supposed to be. We're supposed to do something until Mama Fina says. She should not visit me and go, ah. No. No, no, no. 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 We have to get to a point where people who are coming from a, a, a wizard or a witch... They come straight to us. Because they had, you can go and do everything you want, but once you go to that woman, once you go to that man, you'll be delivered. You will be delivered. Why? And ours is free. It's free. The only challenge is you're dealing with Christians who don't believe. Faith. 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 One time I was in a church and then I saw a certain lady. And then the Lord told me she had a heart disease. And she was about three weeks to operation. And I called out and I said, I'm told you have a heart disease, but God tells me he heals you now. Amen. After three weeks, the woman went to heart operation. They cut. And they find that the hole which they had seen in the machine disappeared. After cutting her. Then they saw her back and she started to glorify God. I glorify God because I came out of operation. I said, now you wasted money. That was a car. <laughs> Plus cutting your skin. Then they open you up. I felt bad. Do you understand? And some people can't give such money in the church. But they can take it to an operation table. <laughs> Somebody said you call. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Somebody's over laughing there. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But anyway, back to the issue here. So, he says that I may know as I'm also known. You understand? To the degree you know God is to the degree he knows you. The more you know God, and I'm not saying he doesn't know you, general terms. He knows all of us. He even knows that guy who's going to kill another guy tomorrow morning. But I'm talking about that another kind of knowledge. Another kind of knowledge. That releases the life of God to function in your life. You use your life. Hallelujah. Now let's define this issue here of glass. You see, you can have an illumination of the word. Okay? Like these lights. If you brought a blind man in this room, chances are he would see nothing. But I mean that there is no light. And I'm not talking about that kind of blindness. I'm talking about the fact that when a man goes to a doctor, okay, and they check his eyes, the lenses might vary, right? Probably somebody has 15 by 17. 22 by 8, sorry. 20, I don't know. Again, I failed to get ophthalmologists to tell us what is the highest eye, whatever, lens. But I'm using my old basic university knowledge. Praise God. And let's just say you went to a doctor and they said that you have 10 against 12. It means that they need to create, I believe, a lens of one eye that equals to the 20 here. Here, this one is increased by 10, and this one is increased by 8, to give you a a 20-20 sight vision. Some people keep those glasses forever. Some, they are corrected over time. That is, somebody was telling me these days, they even correct short-sightedness with laser light. I don't know how they do that. They use laser a beam, it casts and then it corrects an eye. And it's also a form of light. <laughs> Never not. The gospel is beautiful. But, but am I making sense? Now, if that man puts off glasses, 
It means that we're all going to be reading the same thing. We probably might be all driving on the same road. We might be running on the same track. But that man is going to be seeing different from the way I am seeing. If I carry a 20, 20 sight vision, right? Full, 100%. And that means that to the degree of the man's sight, when you enter spiritual terms, is to the degree where also light, darkness can start to appear like light. Now we are defining spiritual sense. I'll give you an example. Jesus one time woke up and did a miracle before many. Okay, Somebody was sick and he was dying and Jesus cast out devils out of a man who had been struggling with devils for a couple of years. And the Bible says, a man looked at him and he saw that he was a prince of Beelzebub. His eyes just saw. Jesus cast out the devil, right? And after casting out the devil, a man saw Jesus and said, for him in his eyes, he said, this one is a... Read it. Read the message. The message. It's interesting how the message says it. He says, but the Pharisees, when they had the report, they were cynical. They said, black magic. And they said, some devil trick is pulled from his sleeve. This is black magic. This is witchcraft. I mean, a guy had a report that Jesus did a miracle and his eyes were cast on black magic. He connected. And if he's a Pharisee, he's an authority. Are you see where I'm coming from? He's a what? He's an authority. He's a pastor. He's an evangelist. He's a prophet. He's an apostle. He's a preacher. You understand? He saw a mirror and said, this is black mud. You see, you ask yourself, under which lens did he draw that conclusion? If Jesus is light, the word was light, okay? In him was light, and the light was the light of men. You understand? That light is the light of men. That light, Zoe, the light which is of God, is the one which is the light of men. Are you hearing me? And that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. And there's a man who saw the light do a miracle, and he called that light darkness. It means that according to his craft as a Pharisee, what he beheld was light. You understand? He would not have crucified Jesus. They would not have crucified Jesus. Some people thought they were doing Jesus a favor. I mean, they were doing Israel a favor. They were serving Israel. From? From black magic. Deliverance. You remember in Acts when Paul preached and the whole city was there? The Bible says, after he preached, some guys went and said, this guy is blaspheming the law. He didn't even talk much about it. But after this man preached, they were glad, glorified the Lord. Uh, but the Jews, listen. The Jews, give me the amplified of that. The Jews stirred up the devout women of high rank. Women. <laughs> women. Not you, of course. And the outstanding men of the town. And instigated persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of the boundaries. Their boundaries. But the apostles, uh, uh, I'm not looking for that. There's a no, no, when they accused them of um, preaching the wrong message and, 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 and blasphemous. They were called, yeah, thank you. When the Jews saw the crowd, they were filled with envy and jealousy. And listen, they contradicted what was said by Paul and talked abusively, reviling and slandering him. Uh-huh. Uh-uh, let's go back. I think give me the amplified of that. Amplified? Yes. Uh uh. Yeah, thank you. Some of the Jews seeing the crowds went wild with jealousy. You see, they were seeing crowds. eh? And then they contradicted everything. You see, you said black, a man says, he said white. (laughs) 
You say pink, a man says yellow. You say maroon, a guy says uh uh-uh, uh, lemon blue. Does that exist? <laughs> now it exists. You understand? But but you see what I'm saying? Somebody just wakes up and sees the wrong thing. Look at even in this line of I mean, go to marriages. Someone can say something to his wife, and then the woman interprets another thing. And then fire starts. You understand what I'm saying? Or a woman says something to her husband, and the man takes it for saying something else, and then punches come out. And when they sit down to say, I did not mean, what do you mean you didn't mean when you say it? That's blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. I say it. You see, you don't understand me. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. No, 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 no. Let's talk about this. I don't want you to go. Let's talk about it. What were you meaning? <laughs> I meant this and that and that and that. That's not what I meant. And they become friends again. <laughs> they forgive each other. You understand? Some of them already have Mpalanira because they told their cousin sister, even the other one told his young brother, man, I don't know what's wrong with this woman. So, you're back, but your family has issues. <laughs> That's why when people come to marry in my office and I start those my counseling things, I tell them, look, when you have issues, at least go to your spiritual story. But don't involve your cousin before you know that. You understand? You, you don't even know the whole story. <gasps> He's done this, and before you know that, everyone is over. I'm just sorry. You understand? Then the two of them get back together, right? After getting back together, they don't tell the other people how the conversation ended. They just say, We reconciled. Then the in laws start to look at the guy like, Man, that's a guy. Eh? Sam is doing to my sister. I don't know what he's doing, but I have reservations. That's why some men don't want to visit their in laws. You spoke. So when they go there, they, they look like. Mugamba <laughs> mina. And that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's why the Bible gives us the right way to reconcile issues. If a brother wrongs you, go to him. And so, my need my husband. I'm cut. You understand? Then talk. Because again, the Bible tells us. Do not allow the sun to go down on your anger. Once it goes down on your anger, the next day, you're wrong. The next day, you're wrong. Some of you, you sleep with it. I kept quiet. You did this to me. You kept quiet. Get the mercy. No, 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 no. The next day, it's wrong. The next day, it's wrong. Because you let the sun go down on your anger. That's a spirit of foolishness. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, yes. Wisdom rests in the bosom of fools. It sits there. It can't leave. I mean, anger, sorry. Ecclesiastes says, anger rests in the bosom of fools. When somebody's foolish, they don't stop being angry. They'll just be there and keep their chief thing. Somewhere in Ecclesiastes. Somewhere there. You'll find it one day when you grow up. You see? So that anger, it rests. I mean, if you're not... Yes, thank you. Be not hasty in spirit. To be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Yeah, when you're foolish, eh? there's a way you want to keep anger every day. Two days. Three. That's foolish. The Bible calls it foolish. The Bible calls it foolish. I'm sorry, but that's true. That's why the sun shouldn't go down on your what? It shouldn't. Get angry, sin not. What's the sin? To sleep with it. That's the version. Look at the prayer. See, be angry and sin not. Full column. Meaning the next explains what is before. Let not the sun go down on your earth. That is when you're angry. And then you go with it and say, and then you face this side. Then even the other one says this side. <laughs> the next day you're both fools. <laughs> Then you see, then you see two fools going to, to, to innocent people also telling their stories. Can you believe what he did to me? Can you believe what she talked to me? I mean, he has not been talking to me for one week. Then you find another person also who is 
wiser than you tells you, ah, one of you has to grow up. What do you mean? Am I young? <laughs> I'm helping somebody. I don't know who. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, anyway, back to the issue. Somebody sees something the wrong way. You know how many errors we've made because we beheld the wrong things the wrong way? How many errors? Just errors. Just errors. Somebody is knocked and then you ask them, what happened? Me, I looked at the road and there was nothing. <laughs> then I crossed, I boom. You understand? But honestly, I didn't see the car. And then you're like, what do you mean? I did not see the car. All I know is that it came and hit me. So what was that point when you had a blind spot not to see the car? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, that is why, when you look at, for example, a physically uh, short-sighted person, I'm talking about very short-sighted, say five to five, okay? I don't know. You realize that, that the lenses are thicker. Do you understand? The lenses are what? A thicker. If they need glasses. To that degree of the thickness of the lenses is to the degree of illumination that you will need to correct that sight. Now I understand why sometimes they use laser. Right? To that degree of short-sightedness is to the very degree. But ophthalmologists tell you, if the, some, one of them was telling me, if the back of the eye is okay, <laughs> they can correct it. But if it is not, now the back of the eye is also sick, there's a problem. Meaning that sometimes if the front of the eye is funny, the back is important. The inward, the inward one has to be healthy. But if the inward one is dead too, then even if you put light like what? There's not going to be anything coming out, right? Now, let's go deeper here. So, you have a situation, and I want you to get this. You have a situation where, because I see the wrong way, and I see the wrong thing, the light that comes to my spirit is not actually light, it is darkness. But I view it as light. It means that you start to grow in what you define as spiritual maturity and salvation. Yet the wrong way. The wrong direction. The wrong direction. And to the degree of the consciences that are seared, is also to the degree of how much is there to save anymore. The grace of God has intended to leave at least a small thing on a man's spirit that should not be seared. That's called grace. It's different from just a physical guy. But when you're born again, God has left a particular place of you. Even if your, cons- your conscience is seared to whichever degree, there's still a part of you that can be strengthened because it remains. So the scripture says. You understand what I'm saying? That means that to a degree a man has seen the wrong thing is to the degree of how deep you need to cut to restore that man. Some people are so in a wrong way that getting them out, you're not going to preach one sermon. You're not going to preach two sermons. You're going to preach 25 sermons, 100 sermons to get it. Even if you preach to a man 20,000 times. I mean, to the degree of how many how much the conscience was shared when they were growing up. Because you see, what happens is today, what happens in the church today, when a man becomes born again, immediately they are shown a different light, which is darkness. Not in all ministries, but I've seen it. You become born again. You understand? But then you're working under the patterns of the world. I'll give you an example. The spirit of the world. The spirit of the world. Make sure you understand that you come in this world poor. Isn't it? You start to struggle in what? In life. I'm just giving you an example. You start to struggle in life. So everything is a struggle. You're not reading just to pass. You're reading to win. You understand? A kid goes to 32. Last time there were 20. They tell him, lie down now. Go down. You understand? They read hard. And many of us were beaten. Me as clever. But many of you were beaten. (laughs) One day somebody saved me. But do you understand what I'm saying? Are we together? So, 
A child grows up with a mentality that in this world you have to struggle for everything. They graduate struggling. They look for jobs struggling. They're at their workplace and then they see something funny. And then they have to struggle through everything they are struggling. Everything they are struggling. They just have a mentality, I am poor. Me, I'm, even their giving is poor. Even the way they walk is poor, you understand? Even the way they think is poor. You look at them and they look poor, you understand? You understand? Yeah, they have a million shillings or two million or three hundred they make a million and then they want to eat cheap food you understand they have to jump certain places in, in, in you know because ah, I want to save two hundred thousand because if I don't save this money how will I live tomorrow you understand and then the poverty mentality it's, it's up an individual you understand and then they are taught and they, told, they tell them in this world you have to struggle <laughs> the kingdom of God is suffering violence Listen, 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 listen. If you read that scripture, the violence is faith. But then they remove the authority and power of faith and then shift it with carnal struggling. And then somebody struggles and then they struggle and then they struggle and then they struggle. Meanwhile, for us we are this side knowing that the race is not to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong. Neither bread to men of skill. But there is something that happens. It's called Rabasa. Hoshilebaya. I don't know if I'm making sense. So somebody struggles through their life and then they work hard. And then they realize, ah, the right light comes. And tell them, look. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. But we are working on conferences. Bless me indeed. <laughs> no, you're blessed. No, 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 no. Bless me. No, no, no. You're blessed. You understand? With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. What does the next verse say? According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. If you are a child of God, when you entered Christ, God blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Then you tell the believer, you have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness through the which knowledge? Epignosis or gnosko? Epignosis of him that has called us to glory and virtue. You've been given everything you owe. You go to work rich. You understand? Before you're paid, you're rich. Before you earn a salary, you're rich. Before you get anything on your account, you're rich. You think rich. You spend rich. You act rich. You respond rich. Everything you do, you know I have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. So, you're at your workplace and a brother badmouths you. Oh, this sister, she's this, she's this. She's that. Then you remember, ah, my blessing is bigger than this. Even if you spoke a million things, you can never change the grace upon a man's life. Why? You're not the one who put it on them. Remember this Balak guy? He gets Balak, right? Then he tells them, cast for me one. Imagine somebody just gets and hires somebody to curse you. Like some of you whom they send witchcraft. You understand? He told him, curse for me, Israel. And I love, you see, look at the way God thinks. The man came back and asked the question, how can I curse whom the Lord has blessed? How? Because there was a no practical sense. There was no practical sense to curse a blessed man. Now, a Christian knows they are blessed. And then you tell them, a curse is coming. Oh, I refuse a curse. I refuse. <laughs> and the devil looks at you and says, ah, she doesn't even know who she is. He doesn't even know who he is. Listen, when you know you're the blessed of the Lord, you have nothing to worry about witchcraft. Nothing whatsoever. Are we together? Are we together? 
Now, somebody says, me, 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 me. He says, how shall I cast whom God has not cast? How shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? How? How do I do it? If God has blessed a man, you can't cast him. Even if you cast him, you're wasting time. That is the place where you learn not to fight silly battles. Why? Because there is nothing he can do that can harm you. He can say, but there is nothing he can say that can harm you. They can do witchcraft the whole night and smoke pipes until their lips become black. But there is nothing they can do that can change the blessing of God upon your life. If they close a door, God will pass through a window. If they close a window, God will break the roof. But he will do everything to fulfill what he said on your life. Open your eyes and see. So, you stop competing. You stop also speaking back. No, it's like, even me, this is my story. You see? No, 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 hold your peace. When you're blessed, you keep quiet. Tell your neighbor, when you're blessed, you hold your peace. Tell him again, when you're blessed, you hold your peace. You hold your peace. You hold your peace. You don't worry about what she thinks about you or who, what they think. Why? Because you didn't anoint yourself. You didn't call yourself. Uh-uh. You would have died when you were younger. But boy, you're still alive. And listening to the gospel. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Be liberated. You see, I was sharing with somebody this morning. It was about 3 a.m. in the morning. Somehow, God took me to a certain meeting. eh? So, I was attending a certain meeting. And he was in the meeting too. And then, he started to speak to me about the difference between the man which is carnal and the man which is spiritual. You understand? He was drawing for me something that was very interesting. I need to share with that. And then he started to show me the, the, the 18 distinctions eh? between the carnal man and the spirit man. Okay? There were 18, right? And I could count that there were 18. And he told me that's the difference between the man which is carnal and the man which is spiritual. Okay? And when I woke up in the morning, I went to do my, my, uh, my uh, certain uh, document I have to check out the meaning of number 18. And I was shocked that the Hebrew number there for 18 means bondage, right? And I could connect that all these eight distinctions all spelt bondage in their own way. And I could see that the end of the 18 and anything that defines bondage, right? The beginning of the spiritual man is a man perfected from anything that can bound him. Now, understand this. When we talk about the law that sets men free, you realize that that's the beginning of judgments. Serious judgments for children of God. He says, for we shall be judged by the very law that sets us free. The law of liberty, you know, there's a certain version, the certain version calls it the law of free men. There's a version that calls it the law of free men. You see, some people don't understand that free men have a law. There's a principle by which we work. When you're free, and the more spiritual you are, the more free you are. Because the canal experience is a limitation. You understand what I'm saying? So, when the Bible speaks, says, Speak ye and do so, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. It means that after any experience that is carnal with you, anything called freedom in Christ dispels anything you define as bondage. Bondage stops to be defined with a man who is spiritual. That's the difference. It might be so hard for some of you to understand me, but I'll probably make it more, more, plain, more plain. The freedom we have in Christ is to have the ability to move in all dimensions of the Spirit. You understand? Because there are things you can never solve until you walk in the Spirit. You can never solve them. This is why he says that now that you live in the Spirit, walk ye in the Spirit also. Why? Because he knows that that's where our weapons are. He says our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in Christ. They pull down strongholds. You see, these weapons are, they are not carnal. 
we don't use anything physical. You don't speak funny words on somebody and think that you'll destroy them. You cannot. You cannot. Somebody can't just wake up on you and say, you're a thief. And then that means that that's going to destroy you. That cannot destroy you. No, 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 no. When he said, whatever you bind on the earth, it shall be bound. He wasn't speaking about the physical bounding. No. He was speaking about a place where a man leaves his body and goes in the spirit realm. And when he goes in the spirit realm, he executes something. And when he executes something, he comes back in the body and executes it again. No, no, no. Read in the Amplified. Read in the Amplified. I tell you, he says, whatever you forbid, I love the way the Amplified says it, and declare to be improper and lawful on the earth, must be what is already forbidden in heaven. But some people think that that's a place where they, God must have forbidden it. No, 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 no. Let me make you understand. When you read the original translation, it literally means... It must be what you have forbidden in the heavenly places. Because, see, Paul says in Corinthians, our conversations are in heaven. That's where we do conversations from. We don't begin our conversations on the earthly plane. No. Our conversation is in heaven. We begin from up. Why? Because we are in Christ, far above all principalities and powers. There are things I'm saying now, but they're already said in the spirit. I don't know if that makes sense. So he says, whatever, let's go back to Matthew, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare improper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. That means you cannot speak on earth what is already, not already executed in the heavenly places. And you cannot bind on earth what is not already bound in the heavenly places. But you see, this is your mind. This is your spirit. That means that you have to move in the spirit. You understand? And then execute something. And when you stand to say it, it's already executed. I don't know if I'm making sense. It's already what? Executed. That's called walking in the spirit. You have to fix it up there before it's fixed here. If you don't know how to fix the situation up there, you're going to become carnal. You're going to address every carnal instrument on a spiritual issue. I think if I do this, this will go through. If I think I'll do this, and then by the end of the day, you wear your ministry, your business, your relationship, and everything is just total carnality. There's nothing spiritual about it. There is a way things are sorted. Tell your neighbor, there's a way things are sorted. There's a way things are sorted. One time we were, we were, in, a, we were in Malaysia. We were going to Malaysia. Michael was there, the guy who was on the, on the, on the, on the projector. He will testify this. We, our bags were supposed to be checked through to a place they call Kuching. But because there was not a good communication on the woman at the counter, she checked our bags to a place called Kuala Lumpur. Now Kuala Lumpur is like West East Malaysia. These are like two separate places. It's one nation, but they're like two separate. You know, Kuala Lumpur I think is on the West. But, so routes there and routes this side are two different, okay? And then we went through the immigration of, 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 uh, of lo- domestic flights to Kuching, thinking my bags were the other side. So they gave us our visas. So we went through. When we went through, we get to, to, to the place where we expect our bags to be, and they are not there. And then they tell us, no, your bags are on a KL terminal. So we get again through. We have to cross, then they cancel our visa. And then canceling our visa, we go back again, to KL, and then when we went to, KL, to the KL uh, counter, a woman explains to the guy in a language that we don't understand. He lets us go in without her. Now there is trouble again. How did they enter without her? So we get our bags, and after we get our bags, now there is trouble to explain to them that actually we passed through here. So everyone refuses. The next thing we know, my flight is going to leave in a few hours. I'm stuck on the airport, and God brings a certain random girl and she just wants to help us. She walked with us everywhere trying to explain. And I thank God for that. But everywhere she was going, they were bouncing and bouncing and then we were missing. I missed the first, we missed the flight and then we booked a flight the next hour. We paid extra money and then we started to wait for these things and wait and wait until at a particular point I told Michael, this thing is spiritual. There is something that they want us to enter Malaysia. So Michael remembers, I sat down like this. And then I said, Ropa ka shalabaya. And then you see, you stop imagining, you enter the spirit. And then you go. Because they had refused us to enter a certain place. So, oh, tell your neighbor, we're not limited. So, 
They had refused us to go a certain place. They told us we can't cross here. We were now looking like we are the wrong guys. Yet the problem was on their side. And then we were delaying and delaying. And then I started to speak in tongues. So I saw myself going. Eh? Like in my spirit. I saw myself going to where the guy was on the counter. And I found him with this woman. And they were talking to and fro. And I told him in the name of Jesus. Understand spiritual language. Stamp on my thing. And then the guy stamped. In the spirit I could see his and I told Michael, she's coming. She's coming. The next thing I know, I saw her running back. Sorry, they've stopped. You understand? I said, yeah. I said, that's it. Praise the Lord. Man, if you're a student and you understand this, you'll pass. <laughs> Jesus knew that there was going to be a problem in the morning. With Pilate, he troubled the wife the whole night. Doop, doop, doop. He started placing, I heard you, woman, you, I'm upon Jesus Christ. Da, 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 da. And next day, the wife of Pilate says, Trouble me not for that man. I've suffered many things in a dream because of him. Because Jesus knew Pilate might be carnal, but he looked for a certain woman whom he could sort. It's called spiritual warfare. Stop thinking you're going to fix things physically. No. Oh, you will fail. You will fail. Go up there where you belong. Your blessing is spiritual. It's not physical. Your blessing is spiritual in the heavenly places. That's why we execute things. Oh, I failed to get married. Go where women get married from. I failed to get a job. Go where people who get jobs go. I I don't know where it is. You speak in tongues, you'll find it. He says, he that speaketh in tongues, buildeth himself in the Lord. Now, here's my pain, and I want to finish. Here's my pain. We're living in a generation where you're still dealing with wrong vision. And that wrong vision, the Bible tells us, casts a wrong light. I told people, even when a man says, I've not seen, he has seen. You might never understand this, but many of you do. Even when a man says, I have not seen, he has actually seen. Because he would not be casting. And the Bible says, and they without a vision cast restraint. Yes, you cast restraint, but you cast something. You cast something. Because, you know, the darkness, it's, it's ignorance. To the degree of what you don't know, it's to the degree of the darkness in your spirit. And to the degree of what you know, it's to the degree of knowledge. Why? Because the entrance of his word brings light. And it gives understanding to the simple. Literally everything that men are struggling with is because their eyes are not single. The eye is not perfect and complete. That is why sometimes the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit is to help your sight first. Before you start to see, you, 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 you have to, your eyes have to behold the good things in the law of God. They have to behold the good things in the law of the Lord. That's a prayer. You have to get to a point where your eyes have to be, because once your eye is evil, you're going to see the wrong thing every time. And it's funny when a man sees the wrong thing and it seems right. When you even get now into the deeper lines of ministry, you're going to realize that many things that seem are, are actually not. They're actually not. That's why he goes to the church in Laodicea and puts eye self on their eyes. That they might see. A man can think that they're in the perfect will of God, yet they are a hundred percent out of the perfect will of God. And they are fully convinced that they're in the perfect will of God. You see, let me tell you, now I'm going to speak as, as an apostle. Understand me. The apostolic anointing, eh? let, me tell you, let me tell you what it is. When the Bible says he set some apostles, prophets, and that, that, that the, the grace we have is he can carry you out of the church and he makes you see it as it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying it happens with only me. I believe there are many people like that with that experience. Whether you carry the, the, or the office or not, it's not what's on the can, it's what's in the can. You understand? The mind of the prophetic, the, the apostolic, it's an architectural thing. In other words, it sees the church, okay? And says, this is the church. Eh? And this is how we ought to build. Now, when Paul says, like a master builder, I laid the foundation. 
and he says, take heed each one of you how you ought to build. It is because he has a picture of what a building ought to be and how a building ought to be and how it ought not to be. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And how it ought not to be. So it's like when you see a man and you're standing here and then you see a man behold through glass and then you can see the lenses by which he sees. And your heart starts to ache because you realize that the way he sees things is not the way they are. But because of the lens inside him, he feels that that's the right way to see. You understand? Therefore, everything comes before him, even if it is the word of God. In its own sense, he needs a truth that goes beyond just the seeing to the repairing of his eyes. Because all of you will behold in the same mirror and you will see another thing. Saints, there are people who are beautiful, but when they go in mirrors, they feel they're ugly. Do you understand what I'm saying? They go in mirrors and see that they're ugly. Yet, somebody does not see them because, because everybody has a different kind of vision. Everybody has a kind of eye by which they see things. That's why our eye ought to be single. Our eye has to be complete because once your eye is complete, you start to see things as they ought to. When you read the word, when you start to read the word with a clear eyesight, everything starts to make sense. Some people, it's how they view Christ when you define Christ. I don't know that I'm making sense. Some people, it's how they view situations when you define situations. Some people, it's how they view their future when you define their future. On this face of the earth right now, as we are walking on the earth, I'll give you an example. There is a man who, in whom God has placed a vision. And he has told him that I'm going to use you to change this world. That's a huge statement. He didn't say to change Kampala. He said to change this world. You understand what I'm saying? That's a big vision. He has given us a grace to get the worlds to come in subjection to us. And on the same face of the earth, there is a woman of God right now. Who is believing God for a job? And they are both Christian. They are both born again. And then you ask, if you get the job, what are you going to do? I'm going to pay fees for my children. And after that, what are you going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to buy land. And then I build a house. And then I'll be fine. And then I'll testify that the Lord has done me well. Do you understand what I'm saying? When a man who has been called to change this world looks at a plot of land he feels it's too small do you understand what I'm saying look at what we call the seed of greatness God has placed in every child of Abraham the seed of greatness because Abraham was great you understand the seed of greatness within Abraham is supposed to also start creating a certain atmosphere for everybody who is in that lineage look at the Christ Look at the Christ. He was the seed of Abraham. When he walked the stuff of his earth, he knew exactly who he was. Do you understand? Somebody, their strength faints in a very small issue. Adversity comes. And then they are proclaiming God. They are on the pulpit screaming, Jesus is Lord. And then they tell them, you have HIV. And then they faint and die. And then they say, oh God. And then you realize everything they say, they didn't even know what they were saying. They didn't even know what they are saying. That's why when you define faith, some people define faith as believing when everything is okay. When temperature hits their body, they start to say, oh, I think there's something wrong with me. Why? Because they have not understood what it means to be a seed of greatness. Uganda is the way it is because people don't know who we are. Our people don't know. Listen, me, I, 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 Uganda is third world. I'm not third world. I'm Zion. Come on. I don't think that I can be third world. I don't believe I'm third world. I don't live third world. I don't act third world. I don't do anything. I refuse to think that I'm third world. Why? Because in me there is a seed that is too great to imagine I'm third world. You understand? Situations around me might give me impression. But I have the choice on how I'm going to treat that news. I can say all things work together for good. For them that love him and are called according to his purposes. Oh, I can look back and say, ah, this is because I'm this. Me, even if I fell 25 times, I would still believe on the 26th that I'm standing. 
Because that's who we are. He says we are not of them which draw back to perdition. No. We are of them which believe until the saving of the soul. If it didn't work yesterday, I come back today. If it didn't back last week, I come back next week. If it abuses next week, I come back next month. Why? I have in my head the mind that it must work. I'm not supposed to fail. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You're not supposed to fail. You're not supposed to fail. So what if they said? So what if he wrote? So what if he thinks? So what if they say? So what if this has happened in your life? Yes, anything can happen. Hell and earth can all flip and then go back. But you don't lose your confession. I carry greatness within the inside of me. So no man came and told me, Oh, apostle, this man, I, de- I depend on him. If, if I leave, I, de- I say, look, 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 look. Don't even start. How can you depend on flesh and blood? Do you know God is a creator? Do you know God is a creator? Oh, he's the only man I knew. Don't under, Come on. He's the only man I know. What do you mean he's the only man you know? Cain killed Abel. Isn't it? Where did Cain get a wife? Yamujawa. God improvised. Don't joke with God. With him all things are possible. You can't say in the world. Okay, let him get her from Mars or him from, from Jupiter. But you cannot say that you can limit God because of what you're going through. Oh, you're refusing to go out of a wrong relationship because you think that if you go out, you'll not eat food. Huh? Sleep hungry. And look to your redeemer and say, well, come on, chigany. But the truth has to be done. You're going to see God. So sometimes it's the eyes through which we see. Don't think that we also haven't been through issues. But we refuse to see them a certain way. I remember there were times would feel funny. And then you just get into your room and then you're crying but you're dancing. You're crying but you're dancing. Why? Because you're refusing to believe something. You understand? The doctor said but you're saying no. I refuse to believe this. It, it doesn't matter what they think I am. I still believe in the word of God when he says that I'm above and not beneath. When he says that I'm the head and not the tail. When he says that I can't regret. I believe. Because of my lens. That's why when he was dealing with Paul. You remember? Paul became blind. God had to keep. He could not lay a foundation on a judistic spirit. No. He literally cut his off sight. Like immediately cut him off. Three days he couldn't see. And then Ananias comes to him. And he tells him, For this reason, I have appeared unto thee. That I may make her thee a witness. You understand? He says that you might become a witness of those things which I've showed thee. And in those things in which I shall appear. He says, can, can you take that scripture? He says, but rise and stand up for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. That when Paul's eyes were open again, he started to see with another lens. You understand? For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of those things which thou hast seen, and those things which I will appear within thee. That means in the three days when that guy's eyes were blind, he was seeing. You understand? And God now makes him a witness of those things he started to see. And the next verse says, next verse, and he says, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles and to whom I send thee. Next verse. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan and to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. I caused you to see that you will make the rest see. Let me tell you, it's a painful world when you're walking in a world where certain men cannot understand the lenses by which you see life. You, 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 God, that's why the guy in Revelation Kel says, the man, come up visa. You see, you're seeing from under. Come up and see. Come up. You, you're seeing from the wrong perspective. You're crying because you're seeing the wrong thing. You're not crying because you have a big problem. Even what you call big, it is small. Look at how Jesus dealt with dead men. Do you remember? He finds a girl sleeping. He doesn't say, I, no, no. He says, Talitha Kuma, just get up, little girl. And see how he looks at it. The damsel, come up, wake up. You know, he's, he's dealing with life that way. He's not conscious that she can refuse to wake up. No, 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 no. 
Because the chastisement of his peace, our peace was upon him. He was disciplined to have peace in execution. Somebody one time asked me, how do I know God is speaking to me? The Bible says, his way is the way of peace. If you want to know that God is speaking to your spirit, he'll minister peace. When you don't find peace in something, it doesn't matter what you hear. God ain't speaking. God does not speak where peace is not. And Jesus was disciplined for your peace. In other words, every time you carry peace, Jesus is positioned to work as expected to deliver and minister to you. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Every time you go the way of peace, he says his ways are the way of peace. His ways. The moment you want to know the ways of God, every area that God will reveal his way, there will always be a line of peace. In everything you do, I'm sharing with somebody today, always first go to your heart and say, do I feel peace in this? When peace is there, go for it. Oh, but I, you wanted to hear a statement. You might not hear a statement, but peace is enough. You understand? It passes all understanding. What does the Bible say? It guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Our mind and Christ can only be held in the person of Christ when we carry that peace that passes all understanding. And then you see a man, a man crying and weeping. You know, sometimes some people come for counseling in the office and I want them to come and see how I'm seeing. I just want them to come and see how I'm seeing. Sometimes, you remember the, 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 the testimony of the servant of, 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 of who? Of, uh, of Elisha? The guy who is disturbed because people are, are around. And the Bible calls him the servant because he lost identity. The guy of identity had, had died. You remember that? So this other guy who came, he didn't carry identity. And because he didn't carry identity, he didn't carry a vision. And you see, this man is at peace. And there's another man restless. And you see, your prayer is that open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses, chariots of fire round about. Elisha, not him. Not him. He was on Elisha. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And then realize, oh, oh, if I'm with this man, I have nothing to worry about. Nothing in this world to worry about. That means some of you are kept by other men. <laughs> you see, but now look at the man's prayer. He, he could have joined that, that, that weakness and say, oh, we are in trouble. You understand? Now imagine if Elisha was not seeing. How many were at his side? How did these people appear? Let me tell you. I'm going to say a very crazy statement, but I pray you never forget this. Hmm? The meditations of the Spirit position a justification for every man which dares to move by faith in line with the absolute truth revealed by God. Meaning, when you're justified by faith, you don't What does the Bible say we become when we are justified by faith? We have peace. We have peace. You understand? The justification by faith gives us peace with God. It gives us shalom with God. That justification of my faith. You're not justified by works. No, you're justified by faith. In other words, that justification by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let me give you an example. If I hope that an angel is standing there and I carry the evidence that an angel is standing there, that carries enough justification to minister to my peace that if the angel wasn't there, he would come. Let him who can take it, take it. Sometimes we know not what to say or even how we ought to pray. Do you understand? But you see, that justification, you cannot... The more you grow in that understanding, you realize the reality of prevenient grace working through you to make you true in everything you do, even without the conscience of certain experiences. Some people are waiting for experiences to know God spoke. 
Some people are waiting for supernatural things to come down and they say, ah, this is God. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. When you say, I'm seen by faith, you will see. There is a creation mystery that places the world in a certain order when a man starts to walk in faith. Receive it in Jesus' name. When a man starts to walk in faith, there's a creation order. See, when the Bible says that the foundations are out of course, for they understand or know not, it means that once you give knowledge and understanding, the world will be put back in its order. There are many things that are out of order. And some people think that we can only pray those things back in order. No. We can pray back, we can put those things back in order when we learn the creative force of a spirit in God. A man can wake up and say Uganda is at peace. And for that reason, Uganda will get at peace. The Shunammite woman lost her child. But when that child died, the Bible tells us she refused to observe that the child is dead. She said it is well. And the Bible says, when, 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 when Elisha sends his, his servant and says, God check what's up with that woman. You remember? She said, all is well. You understand? She says, now I run. I, now, for run now, I pray thee to meet her and say unto her, is it well with thee? He's asking. The dead child. Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. And the next verse says, And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. She refused to think her child is dead. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone. Listen. For her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from a prophet. Why? Because what she couldn't kill, God couldn't kill. But it was dead. And according to God, she was right. If we were looking at normal reasoning, they would say, this is wrong. How can you say that, that the child is not dead when we check the pulse and it's not beating? But there's somebody who can check their child's pulse and it's not beating. And they choose to believe that my child is not dead. And God tells the prophet, nothing. Because what she has refused to observe, God can't create as a prophecy. I said what she has refused to observe, God cannot create as a prophecy. That's why prophecy in the New Testament is a confirmation of affirmed revelation. Before you tell me, I should know. If I don't know before you tell me, then I should question my eyes. Why? Because we have an action from on high. We know. We know. All things. That's the beginning of the life of the spirit. You cannot be ignorant of the things of the spirit. He says, brethren, we're not ignorant. You cannot be ignorant. But that justification, listen, that's why you must preach the message of grace. Because grace is the only thing that justifies you to be right. Do you understand? It is the only thing that justifies you to be right. As in, you might not know that you are. You might even say, but how do I know? He says, justify through faith. We have peace. And his ways are the ways of peace. What do they do? They start to minister God's ministry to you. He starts to speak to you. And you hear him because he speaks by peace. He ministers by peace. He leadeth by peace. But you cannot have that way of peace if you don't understand the justification by faith. You're right because you believe it is. You're not right because you've seen it that it is. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't need to. That's why there's a place in God where the seeing, the believing becomes the sight. Faith has eyes. Tell your neighbor, faith has eyes. Those are the eyes of your spirit. That's faith. The eyes, how do I, how do I clean my eyes? Faith. How do I clean my vision? Faith. How do I know that she has been going through accidents? I had to know. I'm, I don't say I'm a prophet, but I had to know that there was something wrong with her. You just feel it, that it has to be. You just feel it. It's the same thing. Oh. It begins like a creating force. But then you start to realize that because 
It's fourth dimensional. It's not subject by time as of whether it was or is. Because it's the same yesterday, today and forever. And you behold him as he is. I don't know if you understand. That's why we shift you from second dimension to that. When you go to the fourth dimension, you realize that when you start to speak things, whether it has happened in the individual or not, the eyes of the spirit have seen it. They've seen it. Jesus found a fig tree and he cast it and it didn't dry up. He didn't worry and say, why didn't the fig tree dry up? No. The next morning, he didn't even look there to see whether it dried up. No. The Bible says, Peter, beholding, remembered and said, Master, look, the thing you cut. Jesus was not even conscious that it would not have dried up. But what if it didn't dry up that day? Jesus would not still be cautious that it didn't dry up. He's doing his business. And a man tells him, Lazarus, your friend is sick. And Jesus makes a proclamation and says, Lazarus' sickness shall not end in death. And Lazarus died. Jesus, you're a false prophet. You're lying. How could you say that the man was not going to die and he died? And he came to this woman, Martha. She goes on his knees. If you had been here. You remember? He, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You remember that? And Jesus tells a woman, this is deeper than whether he's dead or not. I am the resurrection. And I'm the life. It means that even though he were dead, the resurrection saved. He shall not die. Death becomes led. Death becomes inconsequential. Death becomes without consequence. It becomes without consequence. Miriam remembers one time they called me. You are the cousin. How long had the cousin spent in a coma? Huh? Two months. Is it a girl or a boy? How old was he? Get out of mic. How old was he? 27. And I want to, I want to show you something. How old was he when he was in coma? How old was you say he was, how old is he? He was twenty seven, right? How long had he spent in the in the coma? In the coma. Speak louder. Two months. Two months. So when you called me and told me he was in coma, what happened? You you prayed for him, then after he just got up. The guy just got up. Now if we can go back to how it happened, eh? I just told the guy, dude, wake up. In my head I refused to think that, that young man was in a coma. I refused. I didn't even rebuke it. No. I was conscious of the reality of the life which is in Christ. That knows that it doesn't matter whether this guy has spent two or three months in a coma. It doesn't matter to me. He is coming in contact with life. He's coming in contact with life. And I remember, if she knows very well, I remember telling you that you hung up. He's going to wake up. The moment they hung up, the guy woke up. I didn't first observe him waking up. She's my witness. You remember? I said, wake up. And I told him, I told him, you hung up, he's going to wake up. I didn't stand to say, God, this guy has to wake up. No. I did my own business with a conscience that there is no way. I am the resurrection. I am the life. What do you mean? The life which is Christ is inside me. He works in me both to will and to do. Uh, now, do you know the conscience? On a man that refuses to observe certain things and you choose to believe that this is what it's supposed to be. You choose to say for me, if I see this, this is what is now. That frustrates anything called time. Time is subject to faith. Faith is not subject to time. The first miracle recorded in the history of the Bible, Jesus was not ready to heal. He told Mary, No, it's not thou. It was not the plan of heaven to heal. It wasn't. 
that day God didn't wake up to say, now Jesus, I'm releasing you in the ministry of healing. No. The scriptures are very clear. Jesus said to her, woman, what have I to do with this? Mine hour is not yet come. My time to do miracles is not there. But he found a woman who had faith. Now some of you are still waiting on the timing of the Lord. Wait. That's why faith is now. Now faith. Now, but do you realize when you go to Hebrews, it doesn't say now faith, comma. No, it's now faith. <laughs> do, you, do you see? It says now faith is the substance, not tomorrow's faith. It doesn't say now faith, comma. No, it's now faith. Let me tell you. Any woman who is not married, it's because you don't have faith. Any man who doesn't have a job, it's because you don't have faith. If your business is failing and your ministry is not, it's because you don't have faith. You can leave this room married. You can leave this room with a business. You can leave this room with a ministry. You can leave this room healed now. You can move out pregnant. Now. Now. You can say now. I'm going out with this. And when you do that, justified by faith, you have peace. There is peace that whatever you have said is. That is why when you transition through that experience of the fourth dimension and then you understand that time, even time is subject to the man's faith and the eyes to see. You don't worry about whether it is or it's not. You only worry that it's in the word. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. For example, you might see a situation in your life and then you want to create another situation but there is no evidence for that situation to be created. It's up to you to make up your mind and say that I'm choosing by the spirit of the almighty God to create this situation. Even if the physical eye has not seen it, there is enough qualification in the justification of the spirit because that's the mystery of godliness. That's how we get content. When he speaks of the godliness that gets us content, that's exactly what he says. But godliness with contentment is much gain. You have a godliness, but you have contentment. Where does it come from? Look at the mystery of godliness. He says, great is the mystery of godliness. He says, he came in the flesh, like all of us did. Right? And he is justified in the spirit. Now the seeing of the angels, the preaching to the Gentiles, the believed in the world, the received up in glory, all is because he received the justification of the spirit. You're right by God. Eh? When you say I've failed apostle, you're right by God. When you say I've not failed apostle, you're right by God. When you say I don't have this, you're right by God. When you say I have this, you're right with God. But you see, the essence of his law and testimony, so the scriptures say, is what speaks as of whether they speak his word, the Bible says, and have light or not. Because the light of his word is the line of truth that qualifies everything you say, not the circumstance you go through. So there are men which were rich, but they were not rich by the word. And so they're poor. There are men which were strong, but not strong by the word. And so they were considered weak. But when you are by the word and you carry the strength which is in the word, you are rightly justified and the way of peace is ministered. And when the way of peace comes, you hear God. And you see God. Because peace sees and it hears. Hallelujah. I want to finish this way. We are entering into a time as a church, not just for Nero, the body of Christ. He says in the last days, knowledge shall be increased. Pastor Zach, when you look at that issue, the experience of knowledge being increased, it means God is literally forcing knowledge on earth. Now, it's up to you to catch it or not. He's literally throwing it down. He says, knowledge shall be increased. It shall be increased. He's going to get it and just throw it. It's up to you to get it or not get it. But it is somewhere. There are things, let me tell you, in this world you can never search out them. There are things in this world that can only find you. They can only find you. They just need to find you in a position where you're ready for them. 
anticipating, saying, God, send your word. Because once you send a word in Jacob, you light up Israel. That's what the Bible says. He sent forth a word in Jacob and he lit, he lit up the whole Israel. You see, when, when the only illumination is to come, it has to come from God. Some of you, what you need is just one word from God dropping into your spirit. And the rest of your life is going to be different. You don't need 20 years of fasting and prayer. You don't need 16 years of this. No. You just need one word from the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then God says that you are this and you are that. And the moment that word cleanses in your soul, trust me, if you run with it, the rest of your life is history. The guy who is the same yesterday and forever has told me this one thing. That eternally I have refused to be conscious to the time to create what I must create by the realities of the earth. Because let me tell you, the earthly time plays a slower record than the heavenly time. That's why the one day in the house of the Lord is greater than a thousand in the world. It means that if you spend your time in the presence of Almighty God and then seek His face, you're going to create an atmosphere where you are ahead of all time. That if the time on the earth refuses to submit itself to cause and purpose, it will still submit itself to you because the worlds to come, the Bible says, are subject to you. Oh, I wish you understand me. You can change your life now. You don't even need 20 years. No. You can make a prayer right now and change your life for good. A guy the other day came when I told guys to put up their hands, those who had spent five years without a job. I don't know, the brother testified. Where is the brother? He was telling me that his brother had spent about five years without a job. And I told guys, you remember that time I said five years? The guy said, my brother got the job next day. What was it waiting for? What was it waiting for? It was waiting for truth to come to it. Sometimes tomorrow morning there is a man who is not thinking about you. But the weather can change tomorrow and you are the only person he has to think about. Why? Because of the way you see. I see that you are blessed. I see that you are a success. I see that everything you touch, it will change. Come on somebody. Start to put the world, your world in course. Speak in tongues. Put your world in course. Come on, put your world in course. Put your world in order. Take three minutes right now and just put your world in order. Come on, put your world in order. Just put it in order. Take a minute and put your world in order. How do you see? Through, see through the word and start to create. Jesus, more of you. I need so. Come on, just fix the minute. Put your world in order. See through the eyes of God. Through, see through the eyes of the word and fix your world. Fix your world. your world. Hey. Come on. You have another minute. Your life. 
It's happening now. Not tomorrow. Now. Get your future. And make it happen now. Come on. Lord Stephen. What do you see? I want you to give 
give a mighty hand of praise to God like you know something happened today. You're not coming out of this room the way you came. You're not going to go back the same way you came. You're not going to be that woman who came out of that car. You're not that man who left the office today. You go back different. accept the Lord as my personal Savior. Jesus, put up your hand and we pray with you. You want to be born again? God bless you. Anybody else? Come on, I feel there are other people. Even in the overflow, just raise up your hand. God bless you. There are others. Put up your hand and say, I want Jesus today. Say, I want Jesus today. Oh, God bless you. Say, I want Jesus today. I want to be born again today. I see another hand in the back there. God bless you. Come on, if you've put up your hand, say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again. From today, your Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. If you have made that prayer, come and see this guy who want to take your names, follow you up, love on you, and share eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Create your world. Tell your neighbor, create your world. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.